Now we come to an important part of the business, liquidity. It's the cash a uh, business can access to convert um, to pay short term debts. So another way of looking at this is it's 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 a, it's a amount of cash flow flowing through the business to meet our short term commitments. We look at what we call the current ratio, but in some um, some texts also refer to it as the working capital ratio. But for our purposes, I'm going to continue to call it the current ratio. It talks about the extent the business can meet its short term, and by that I mean 12 months, uh, short term financial commitments. Is there sufficient cash, receivables, and inventories to pay short term debts? mainly payment supplies. Receivables uh, mean the amount of um, customers that owe us money in the short term, usually on account on 30 days. The current ratio is calculated by looking at the current assets by simply dividing by the current liabilities. And here's a quick example. Uh, 26,000 is the current assets. Divide that by Eight and a half thousand, and we have a ratio in this instance of 3.05 to 1. And it's expressed as a ratio to 1. So that means how many times are current assets, um, current liabilities, or well, how many times is current liabilities covered by current assets is probably a better way of putting it. And here I've got an important benchmark again, 2 to 1 is acceptable. Anything below that we start to get worried, anything over that it's fine. Now let's turn to the balance sheet and see where we got these items from. So current assets, there you are. Um, the total was, was 26,000, the total current liabilities is 8.5. So we plug those into our um, formula, 26,000 over 8,500, giving us that ratio which I explained to you before. What does the current uh, ratio show? Well, it shows short term financial stability. The higher the better, 2 to 1 is acceptable, um, which means, as I said to you before, double the amount of assets to cover its liability. So 2 to 1 is comfortable. Now let's turn to gearing. It's also called solvency. So a solvency is how um, solvent a business is in the longer term. So can it survive in the longer term? It talks about the ability to meet commitments in the longer term. In particular, it measures the relationship between debt, we call liabilities, and equity, what the owners have put in. In other words, the capital that they put in. The debt to equity ratio is the proportion of debt and the proportion of equity to finance the business. The business employs a whole lot of assets, remember from looking at our balance sheet. And those assets are financed by debt, called liabilities, and we call that external finance because that's come from external uh, from the business. And equity, the amount of capital that comes from the owners, who we call um, internal finance. So let's look at the debt to equity ratio. It's the total liabilities divided by owner's equity. Here's an example. If our total liabilities are 73,500 and our total owner's equity is 130,000, we have a ratio of 56.53%. Now let's turn to the balance sheet to see where I got those figures from. Total liabilities, 73.5. Total owner's equity, 56.5. Now let's plug that into um, my ratio. As I've said, total liabilities is that. Total's, total owner's equity is 56.5. My formula here as you can see is total liabilities over the owner's equity which means that we have a 
um, ratio of 130%. What does it all show? Well, it shows the extent to which the firm is relying on external finance to finance the business's assets. The higher the ratio, the less solvent is the firm. Right, so it means the higher proportion of debt in relation to how much is being put in by the owners in terms of equity. The more the ratio, the higher the risk. A ratio of less than 100% is acceptable. One thing that must be noted, however, is that level of gearing increases profits. So, in one sense, having some level of debt is good. If you think about it, if if I want to increase my business and borrow the funds to buy a um, a new machine, something that's going to generate income, for example, um, that's getting income and hopefully profits. So. I would have borrowed some money to buy that machine, which increased my level of gearing, but has increased my profits. And that's why we say a ratio of 100% is acceptable. Anything below um, is okay too, um, but we don't want a, a zero percentage of debt equity ratio because that means that we can get more out of our uh, business. So that's the conclusion of the ratio analysis. I hope you got something out of it. Um, you'll be getting lots and lots of um, follow exercises, um, case studies to do to um, check your understanding and to apply what you have learnt in this flip lesson. I hope it's been useful. Thanks for listening.